um, an item in Mimic and further into Torok or something like that. It is Troy, oh God. but there is a way to uh, to read and anticipate that. So I find those seems to be the most interesting um, ones that are, you know, multi-varied, multi-faceted. But with that said, we are currently off. Um, like to hear uh, what you want to see after we get our herpes here. I am usually just in favor of things opening up quickly and giving the players the ability to route creatively through the game. So if you know if we get those mitts and a moon pearl early, we can go into the dark world or we can press our luck in Eastern Palace or you know where wherever we want to go uh, that's open up that opens up pretty early. So that's what I like. Absolutely, I agree. Already you see our players that kind of hugging the walls. They're not just doing that for fun. Um, Link's movement oscillates at 2121 pixels a frame, So, but that's only when you're facing left and up. So what you'll see players do is sometimes hug a wall or they'll kind of shimmy on stairwells. That's to try and reset their movement to gain pixel boosts. It's a small little time save, um, but over the course of an entire run, especially if you don't have boots, uh, we're talking uh, some fairly substantial gains. If you think even a minute is saved, that's an entire check, right? That could have been your ice star cave, that could have been your whichever. So little things like that will really go a long way. A lot of people think GT is your execution place, but it starts right out the gate. Um, you can lose entire, an entire second every room you enter, depending on how you move through that room. Definitely. And we did uh, start off with a fire rod, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, looks like we're going to be burning these guys down, but we're still going to have to look for bombs. Frame going a little bit out of the way there with the pots to try to get some extra kills, and there's bombs there in that yeah. chest. Wow. Yeah, I definitely try to find the prize packs, and Fire Rod is good. Um, it makes Death Mountain an easier option should they get access early, because they have a fire source. Even so, logic, it means basement era is no longer a factor. It means the dark will be simpler in terms of skull woods, because oftentimes, um, skull woods, whether it's crystal or not, you can do a quick little dip to check an item. So with the Fire Rod, it just means in terms of your routing, you have a little bit more assurance to um, how you actually want to enter the Dark World, be it from Link's House or from Village. Um, you just have uh, more worth, potential worth, on the Western portion. Yeah, we'll just have to be on the lookout for that sword um, to be able to get into the back of Skull Woods, but hopefully we can find that before we even have a chance to get there. Plenty of game before we'd see that. Yeah, definitely. So at this point, these players are probably just going to spare no time. They are just going to be jetting through the escape. And there's some power gloves. Oh boy. Yeah, a lot of people often um, have mixed feelings on kind of escape. I personally love escape because not only is the music really hype, um, but uh, in, in terms of routing, uh, it's static beginner route. So, or not beginner, but it's a static route to the seed. Um, when you start a seed, like, and say open, there are so many different routes you can take. And a lot of the time, um, you can lose time to your opener dice roll. But with escape, um, not only do you get some items to help shape your progression, but then you're not really losing in terms of that. Afterwards, you can make an informed decision, like going straight to such shore, or doing something creative like Hulahan to get bombs to go Eastern or even early uh, Death Mountain or the like. But I do like that is a little bit more you know, static at the beginning uh, to take out some of that beginning early game RNG. And then it can really branch open and the players have you know, more informed decisions to make rather than just picking a route that seems best and hoping it works out. I agree, and if you get an item like the Power Gloves here, you can start thinking about the decisions that you are going to make while you're traversing through here, because you have to do it, you know your opponent has to do it, so you can start thinking, oh, if I get the book but I don't have the boots, do I go over to Desert Palace? It might be completable. You know, like, what do we do here? So, you know, I, I like this time just to think, even. Yeah, definitely. Like, if they got um, the mirror uh, or the hookshot here, um, it could mean that they could already go to Hera. Yeah, they don't have the lantern, it'd be a sequence break, but they do have the fire source, and they might be reading that that's the play. Um, other people, they might not. They might think that's a little bit too bold yet, and they'll still want to go to Kakariko. 
or uh, of course, you know, if you want to go so shore gambling for a bottle or a flute, and then when you go back to Kakariko or go there the first time, um, you will be able to check your item and also activate. There's a lot of different little things you can do, and uh, that's kind of why I like the standard escape sequence. Yeah, exactly. Um, now it's going to be maybe a little bit of a hard sell to go down to South Shore with this much magic, but if somehow they can get like a pull tree prize of some magic or, or find some off the crabs or something like that, or off of a lucky en enemy drop, then, you know, we might actually see that. Otherwise, I suspect both of these players are going to be doing Kakariko first. Yeah, and we got our <laughs> Moon Pearl and uh, our Quake, so... Um, not too much just yet. Nice to have. This does open up a stronger fake flipper plate in the future. A little bit premature yet, but with the Moon Pearl, you can get the Water Wax state. Uh, so oftentimes you'll see players go to Ice Rod and they'll kind of make an informed decision. And if they have the Moon Pearl and they have 500 rupees, uh, they might just go for a more early Zora plate. You kind of isolate Catfish a little bit, but in terms of early game, um, often flippers might show up and that could be your progression. Um, or it could just be an early boon or advantage to your gameplay. Finally, we get some rupees there in the sanctuary, so we can we can buy some bombs and reload if we need to, um, if we don't find any along the way. But we do have the two requisite bombs for Blind's House and the Well, so should be good on those fronts. We'll see if these players decide to head on over to Lumberjack or the Lost Woods. Looks like Christos is going to elect to bail on Lumberjack at this point. It's a pretty interesting decision, and he does go for a 50-50 bomb drop. So take note, if you're looking for a bomb, that is a 50-50 bomb location. So very good awareness uh, using the power glove. You see Ferran kind of taking a little bit of a shortcut for going that bomb, but Chris is currently sitting at three. So he's doing a little bit better in terms of uh, bomb count for Kakariko, but both of them for going Lumberjack. That's a pretty interesting thing. Um, I'm partial to checking Lumberjack myself. I kind of flip-flop between checking and not checking, and <laughs> hey, so the boots. That's always nice to see. And that could be a reason to check Lumberjack now. Yeah, it's <laughs> really funny, but I guess the point I was going to make is that when you forgo Lumberjack, um, yeah, you're like, well, you can't get the item without the boots, right? Well, when you get the boots, people will check it anyway, so it's somewhat negligible. You can route it in to save, like, fractions of time, but really... Um, See, now Chris has kind of isolated that little check to go bomb Crocs, which is fine. It's still really early. He, he's not worried about that. Um, I'm actually also going for the 50-50 bomb drop but after, so good awareness there. And another bomb, but uh, I guess to kind of dial back, um, when you skip Lumberjack, you're skipping a potential tree pull and a hoarder. So if you are looking for money or resources early game via bombs, you know, money, what have you, um, those extra checks are really good. You have a separate tree pull and then you have an extra hoarder. And don't forget that the hoarder drops eight items, but the seventh item will be unique from all the others. But going into Blind's house here, uh, early sword, that's really good too. It's fantastic. I mean, we were talking about Skull Woods earlier. Now that is completable once we get access to the Dark World. Just a hammer or a glove upgrade away from that. We can activate our Quake Medallion. That's exciting, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and of course, half magic sitting there in the back of Blind's well, house is going to make a lot of this now. <laughs> very easy. I thought this was hard mode standard. What's going on here? It's no hard mode specified. I mean, maybe, maybe we'll ask him for game two if they want to do that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, but um, another exciting reason, um, obviously we're going to do some quick checks here in the well. Um, so I guess we'll wait and see what's in here first. Ooh, bomb upgrade. That's always great. Bombs. Wow, quite the, pa quite the package. Bomb upgrade. Here's six bombs. It's like a... It's like you open up the Christmas gift first that your parents specify, and then you open up the next one, they go together. I swear that never Feels happens. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the first, this is a very generous seed right now. Yeah. I want to say that the bombs because I'm commentating, but uh, that's completely not a thing. But, uh, um, so the ex other exciting reason that we have a sword is that the randomizer is based on, <laughs> and another sword, master <laughs> sword. Um, that's pretty good. I always like to, uh, whenever we get Master or, you know, Lamp and Cape, I kind of like to think of it as a commentaries uh, Agabate seed. 
um because it's still a little bit premature but you kind of get hints of that and people like to speculate that but well we still did really find early, the boots but... too which yeah. you know, makes that a little bit scarier like that is that has probably got to be on their minds at this point they're like why didn't i go check that but you know you, they're gonna they're gonna do a lot of the more lucrative areas of the game before they make that commitment yeah absolutely so to finally wrap off, I was trying to say uh, Sword is really good because um, the randomizer is based off the Japanese 1.0 version. It allows certain minor and major glitches to take place, but in terms of the randomizer, minor glitches that you'll see have to do with item dashing and uh, spin speed and that sort of thing. With the Sword, it will allow you to do that sort of stuff, but also you cannot item dash and do stuff like hammer picks unless you have both the sword and the hammer. You might, or <laughs> sorry, unless you have both the sword and the boots to do that sort of thing. You have the boots, but you can't actually go through any object without a sword. So um, getting the sword and the boots is actually a very nice pair. Master is, you know, an added boon, but really even just the fighter sword is substantial in terms of time safe and uh, technique that you can use within the game. So we did have Farime uh, YOLO, the race game there, not paying off. So Christos gaining a little bit of time there. But Farime actually checking the bonk rocks now. Going to get those bombs, and maybe we'll see a check on the Lumberjack at this stage. So this could be an information advantage for Farime. And perhaps even we might see a trip up Death Mountain. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting play. Um, obviously, getting the save point is really good. So, he, uh, like you said, it's probably on his mind that this might be a thing indeed. And so he's probably going to consolidate the check with the save point from the mountain, uh, banking on the fact that there is no flute. Obviously, in order to get to the mountain, we need the flute or the lantern. So there's a very good chance that, in fact, flute or lantern could be at Eastern, and he's just going to assume um, hoping that it's not, in fact, the flute, and just get the save point here early. It is a useful save point to get to, and you do get a check with the old man as well, so there's really no down point to doing this. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and I like the play. Mini Moldorm Cave and the Lumberjack not really paying off unless you really want a red boomerang. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're not going to be seeing Aga unless it is our only way to get to the Dark World. And I don't suspect either of these players will go there without the lamp as well. Uh, no, most certainly. Uh, Chris was doing a pretty standard check, uh, checking the dam and uh, mini Moldorm to ice her out here. And here is where the decision to fake flipper would come up. But not having the rupees, I suspect he'll probably save and quit. Um, he would be tunneling on flippers, and at this point, uh, looking at his items, he's probably not too worried. Um, but he is going to go for it after all. With the boots, he can do a quick water walk if you set the state. But I'm not entirely sure what he is doing. Yeah, I mean, with Moon Pearl and with Boots, you could actually set up the, oh, yeah. the Walk on Water, <laughs> which Christos is going to do right now. So we can actually potentially collect that, that Zora Ledge item, which is really interesting. Hey, there's a Tempered Sword up in tempered Spectacle nice. Rock. This wow. Scene. Yeah, so Fram, of course, getting his low checks here, and that's through the good temper. Uh, saves a substantial amount of time. After temper, the racers do not care about butter whatsoever. Um, butter is good in terms of mitigating human error, but temper is basically the best sword in the game that you could hope for in terms of uh, being a competent runner here. Um, the nice thing about Christo's game plan here is that he's able to check waterfall and whatnot. He is somewhat isolating catfish, but he will be able to get these checks very quickly um, um, thanks to the boots and whatnot, and uh, we'll be able to get info. So should things really dry up in the seed, he can come back for catfish and Sora. But at the moment, that is a small risk he is taking. Did he just skip those chests? Oh, okay. He was running over first to see what it was, and then he's coming back. That's interesting. Check the right chest first. The left one is bias and always has herpes. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're both equally bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said that because if you actually get a heart piece to refill your hearts to full, um, it'll undo the water walk state. And for some reason, I feel like the left is bias. It's my own bias, but you know. Everybody has their own little biases. It's okay. Absolutely. Um, I like this routing to come back to Hobo because you can just dash right through this area. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Farhan just did it on his screen. Well, he didn't do it, but it looked like he went for it. Um, and Christos, I think, went for it too. But both try to go for anti-fairy skip in the dam. Uh, neither were able to get it. It's somewhat of a tight maneuver. Um, you need to 
have practiced it a little bit in order to make it, but either way, it's only uh, some frames lost as opposed to getting it. But uh, you get really hyped when you do get it. Looks like Christmas is going to go to Eastern now, which makes a lot of sense. The mountain isn't really too open. He knows it's not in logic. So in terms of Dark World, um, there's a good chance, again, that there could be something like Flute, uh, Lantern, and Hammer here. Um, of course, you know, it could also be uh, Mitz or something else. Um, it could be Mitz to pair with the Fire Rod to go into their Dark World Axis. And Chris is having a little trouble with the Spin Speed here. Uh, spin Speed kind of fickle. You do need to release the sword and tap a one frame apart from each other. There are a couple of different ways to do it. And it's the kind of trick where you can practice it a lot and you'll get it 9 out of 10 times, but then that one time you won't. And hey, there are both the Mitz and the Flute. Let's go. Okay, then. That is fantastic. So... I imagine Christos is going to book it over to, um, well, we might see a dip on King's Tune and this then actually, head over to Kakariko. Like, yeah, this is really exciting, actually. Um, he's going to get King's Tune here, but with the flute, he can pair it and check Meyer area. And of course, they do have the medallion. Now, with the boots, they do have access to Meyer and a fire source. They don't have Samaria, but Mar Meyer is actually uh, very much um, potentially on the table right now. But also, this does open up to West Dark World. And of course, the fire rod, there's a lot to do there. So it'll be interesting to see if um, Christos or if I'm do odd to check Meyer and then go into Village of Outcasts or how they want to pair that. They have a lot more options on the table now. What's also going to be interesting is if we see Christos decide to go up the mountain with that flute because there is that Tempered Sword upgrade and that will make some of these upcoming fights significantly easier but christos is indeed going straight into the dark world not even activating that flute i was just going to ask because you had a friend in chat uh comment about talking during the anthem but i don't even think we got the anthem so it looks like we have green pendant thieves town what a surprise and <laughs> We've got uh, Swamp and Ice Palace as our other pendants. I believe our other five, six, along with Tower of Hera, is uh, Turtle Rock. Yeah, Pendant Thieves Town, um, while uh, <laughs> can be can be good and bad, just depending on the situation. Um, at the moment, it's not too bad. They still have a lot on the table. They still have the entire Darkhold tour. They have Skullwoods here. Um, you know, they, they do have the Mire area. The mountain is open for Christus, but not here I'm. So... Um, I would not be surprised to see Christmas actually skip these ten entirely, or just do a first four and try and reroute it in later when you've exhausted more options. Because sometimes, depending on the, like, you might have a pendant dungeon and you might think, oh, well, there might be worth here. It might be prudent to actually go someplace else to buy time to get items to make a more informed decision. So while, you know, you do have boots, you also have mitts to get into Dark World quickly. And... You know, he didn't activate the flute, I don't think. So he can pair the flute activation on a re-return to the town. And, you know, you could also consolidate with smiths and whatnot. So there's a lot of ways to reroute these town in. So at the moment, it's not too bad, but it could be really trolly. And I think for I'm having some of the same spin suit issues. Ugh. Okay, we need to get the devs on that stairway. I think it's been patched. Spin speed does not work from there. Hmm, I did not know that. Very cool. Or bad, I guess. But... <laughs> <laughs> Good information. Alright, so for I'm gonna grab the treasure trove at Sahasrila and probably join Christos over in Skull Woods. You can see Christos making a beeline towards Mothula because, you know, if you find the items back here, then you're just done. You don't have to worry about the rest. I mean, he did the quick dip in front and that did not yield any anything. Yeah, he could be doing a situation where he goes all the way through Skullwoods and then he'll save and quit and go someplace else so he doesn't have to walk back through. I imagine he probably will back walk through, but this is a situation where NMG training would do really well. And I'm sorry, we have our anthem here. Speaking of NMG training, that was a beast of a fight for Christos Owen <laughs> at Mothula. I... I swear he didn't even need those, <laughs> those uh, the tempered sword there. It, it, I think it went just as fast. Yeah, it's uh, moth is obviously RNG, um, immune to class five damage, um, which is the same as a uh, a butter sword's uh, no sorry class four damage, um, which is the same as like a spike trap, and so 
you know, with four, four slashes of temper, but what you can actually do is you can dash with the boots while holding your sword out. A dash will do the same as a slash. A poke will do um, less damage, typically. Uh, you know, long story short, less damage. And so a good technique is to have your master sword, and if you pair it with boots, you can actually try and mitigate some of the damage override. Um, it works really good with temper, but you can also do it with the uh, master. You know, eight master or fire out shots, and mouth is down, so very masterful fight by Christos. And <laughs> we are finding a hook shot in Meyer. That is an amazing find by for I'm there, and ether the requirement for Misery Meyer, so that is just going to be a nice... A bonus to be able to go up Death Mountain and get the huge cache of items here, especially with mitts at this stage, we can we can check a lot. Yeah, either. Yeah, let's do the good stuff. So Fran did auto check it, and now again because of their items, they have good divergence. Hookshot is actually a bit of a, a um, not on the chain, like a crux to different routing here because of the Titans. Fran now has all access to Death Mountain, but also Hookshot Cave with the glove. So Hookshot was a very, very strong item to get, and then he can just leave Hera as its own separate portion later, uh, should he not find the items to facilitate him checking. Um, so that was really good, and you know, obviously got the information. Couldn't enter Meyer, but got the info and got two quick checks to again make that Thieves Town pennant decision easier, to make a different decision easier. You know, just kind of rounding out the gameplay there. So the hookshot will be a big boon to him. Absolutely. Now Christos did find the book in Skull Woods in the the vanilla big key location, so that could potentially come back to bite. For Rhyme as he finds a bottle, our first bottle, in fact, in Paradox Cave. Yeah, a bottle and some bombs. Uh, just a lot of quality of life items so far, and yeah, the book is definitely really good. Um, it'd be ideal for Christus to actually find the mirror, because um, then, like you said, he would be able to, like, you know, kind of pair those together, and uh, with the boots and the fire source and the glove and everything, you know, desert is definitely on the table and a crystal. So, you know, already both racers finding some very, um, you know, good items here. A lot of potential for divergence and, uh, you know, lead shifting. Samaria on Floating Island. So no Meyer access, but there's um, one way to finish Meyer. Yeah, and that means we are definitely going to be getting our mirror, which was somewhat in question since Swamp Palace is a pendant. But now we know we have to find that mirror somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I guess just to kind of put this forward, um, I'm ethnically half German, but I'm the third generation to live in Canada. Um, but uh, I have family in Germany, blah blah. Yeah, so it looks like Christmas is going to continue in these town. Pretty interesting. Um, obviously, not too many items in the front, so in terms of value, it's here. It is a pendant, not a crystal, but it is a green pendant, so there is an additional item here. So at the very least, he'll be able to pair this with the entire pod area. And pod is still very much off the table. Um, it is quite, quite, quite logic locked at the moment. It sure is, but with that bottle that Farime picked up, we could do a lot of exploration there. Christos doesn't really have that option. I mean, or the keys could work out such that they can make some progression, but um, that's probably not a priority at this stage. Other than that bottle, it looks like Death Mountain has run a bit dry here, but we have four more checks in Hookshot Cave, and we know Samaria's up there. Also get some intel about what medallion is required for Turtle Rock. Oh, that's right. That was, ooh, nice finger webs in the, in the, in the cave here. So already, um, I saw, um, I saw, I saw Palace coming into view here. We don't have the hammer, but with the hookshot and everything else, it's definitely leading to it somewhat. Um, so, you know, um, a hammer here at some point would be really good. A point I wanted to make a long time ago that I kind of forgot and was bugging me, and of course, it's how commentary goes. You kind of think, remember and forget things, but with the hookshot and uh, even the red boomerang uh, that we saw earlier, um, they are useful in the fact that you can stun an enemy to check the enemy's stun prize pack. Um, so obviously, you would not want to defeat Agnum to go get a red boomerang just to check a stun prize pack, but with the hookshot there, um, that is another little technique and knowledge bit that uh, Furime has going for him. 
Those bottles not amounting to anything here, but still a good check nonetheless, and I think Farime is going to jump into Skull Woods now, so we'll likely get that book, and then we'll see if he decides to make the same play on, on Thieves Town. So far, Thieves Town not really paying off, but um, I believe there's one more item, I want to say, between the, the big chest and blind. And then, in addition to that, we've got the green pendant, too. Yeah, that's a good point. He actually um, skipped getting the big chest, uh, not having the hammer, so obviously he couldn't have gotten it. And yeah, nothing in these tones so far. The pendant might be something, and of course, Pestle Steed is uh, still on the table. But this is kind of, you know, again, kind of referring to what I was saying. Furam is checking a lot of these other locations. So now the option of even going into Pennant Thieves Town is uh, starting to become weaker and weaker for him. Um, he still has a few things they need yet, but his options have grown. And because of that, um, his uh, opinions might have grown away from Thieves Town. And with the flippers that does give us access to the to the pod area now we could set up a walk on water with the boots but that would be out of logic but we know you know pod going over to the pod area going to catfish going to pyramid is now within the logic that's also an interesting play that can be made here if maybe Farame wants to to bail on the south loop yeah, it would not surprise me um, if he does just like dip the first four and then leaves. But uh, you know, either way, he'll be somewhat uh, following in Chris's footsteps here before long. I'm sure with uh, the shovel game. So we're eight digs in and still nothing. I feel like uh, I don't know if there was a change recently, but it feels like the digs are always really long. But again, that's probably just my own bias in recent seeds. But uh, Chris just very intelligently kind of shoveling to the right to find the mirror. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Mirror is one of those lynching kind of items in terms of rando. Uh, that just, that, that's huge. It's perfect for the route right now, too. It's like in the best place possible, you know, right before you have to make the call to head away from mirror locations. So now Christos can go ahead and route in the Smiths. He can route in Purple Chest and... Uh, south of Haunted Grove, and we even have the book to check Bombo's tablet. Now we are leaving these hammer pegs behind, so that's going to be something to, to remember. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting, again, dialing back to what you were mentioning earlier. Um, with the book, you know, now Meyer Aaron Desert is really strong for him. Uh, it, it still wasn't bad for Furheim. He got uh, the hookshot and everything, and uh, you know, got some information. It was still a quick check, but it'll just flow really nicely for Christos here. But yeah, mirror definitely a, a very strong item. I would say it's probably one of the strongest items in terms of rando. You can it, it really affects your routing, how you you know go about things, um, how you're able to pair things. It's just insanely, insanely helpful. It's incredibly malleable as an item, and. Uh, um, the only problem for Christos here is that he still has the mirror ledge, and he did check the other things, so I wouldn't be surprised if he does isolate it or take an alternative route. But having the mirror here, very convenient and very good of him to remember to activate his flute. So if you miss it the first time, uh, feel free to you know, show your solidarity to the Enhanced Anthem. Yeah, kind of got bailed out there, honestly, <laughs> by that mirror. Yeah, it... <laughs> but it's not too bad to get back here anyways. So, uh, looks like he is trying to dodge this duck now. Okay, he's good. See, I don't like questioning or overreading players' motives, but I'm I'm going to chalk that up to Numpty Vision. So it was very much calculated, um, because it did, in fact, work. So I'm going to go with that. Fair um, enough. <laughs> I'm um, sorry, are you saying something? Well, it looks like uh, Christos is going to be able to to go back here and just continue his route. Um, will Farim make this play into Thieves? I'm really curious to see. I'm actually really curious as well. Um, again, his mental state going into this dungeon is very different. You know, oftentimes you'll have uh, static plays that you might like to do, like, oh, I always do first four thieves no matter what. But uh, some players, you know, they really do consider different factors, but he is going to enter. 
I think I'd be surprised if he continued, but the first four makes a lot of sense. Christos actually might, managing to find his first bottle there in South of Haunted Grove, so... And it has some blue goo in it, so that's not... It's not too bad. Nice little safety in case somehow we run out of magic with our half magic. <laughs> or we need a little health refill, but probably not that important for these players. Yeah, definitely. So we are about to get our hype cave check here, and then I would also be surprised if maybe Chris's checks tablet um, obviously doesn't have, uh, you know, anywhere else to go really. But uh, well, let's see what we have today. All right, can we get some hype in here? Piece of heart. <laughs> the fourth bottle of the hammer. hammer! Oh, baby, okay. And a mail upgrade. That's pretty interesting. So now, obviously, uh, he could continue his tour uh, going up towards even the pod area. Now, the only problem here is that the lantern locks a lot of pod, and then there's the bow. So there's no guarantee that going there would even be good. And without the bow for Eastern, uh, this is not really going to be uh, you know, conducive to you know, strong routing. But it looks like Chris is now, in fact, going to go to the my area. So this is you know, very good, very logical for him to go. Definitely, and gonna be grabbing that hook shot and gonna be mirroring over to Desert Palace. Gonna get another crystal here, or okay, gonna first check this out. Makes sense. Get to check out what's on the ledge. Uh, we'll see how he decides to handle Agonos Cave. That can always be a little bit tricky to route in. Yeah, Agonos is a little bit controversial. Um, I do think there's a time and place to check it early, but it's kind of thing where you either check it early and like, there's a couple of different philosophies to it. Um, it's like, well, if it's going to be a junk item, you might want to check it early to get your junk item. It's technically the same as, like, a strat or any other place. But, uh, you know, it is somewhat time-consuming as well. Um, so there are a lot of different philosophies on it. But I would not be surprised if you did go to check it still. Of course, uh, if you're on getting the mirror here. And for I'm with the information that Samaria is on the floating island, this is a lot more valuable for Farim. So we'll see the priority of when Farim actually goes for that. Now, so we will make a lot of decisions here. It's gonna be pretty good. What's also kind of interesting about Farim's route right now is Farim actually is gonna have full access to complete Swamp Palace after Hype Cave. Assuming uh, they're routing in that direction. And Swamp Palace is a pendant. It's not even the green pendant or anything. So this could be an opportunity for a very large gamble. Uh, it's okay, because we'll find our bow in there. Well, so. it could be there. It could, maybe it could be an Ice Palace. We also have full access to another pendant dungeon. Ice Palace. So we actually have the ability to full clear all the pendant dungeons right now. Lamp and Ice Palace. Um, bow and Swamp. Let's go. I'm down. Let's go. Yeah, Chris is making quick work here in Desert. Um, each Lamp will ahead. I will take two Fire Rod or Ice Rod shots with the bow. Uh, that is not an option. With the Master Sword, um, I think it's still eight slashes. The charge spin, it might be four spins, I believe. But either way, yeah. half magic and fire rod, two shots each. <laughs> yeah. Hardly even needed that half magic there. A full heart as the reward. Getting pretty healthy and armored up here. Yeah, something uh, coming from NMG that uh, players will kind of recognize that rando players might not really think of is that the time it takes to refill your magic and health at the end of each cutscene does take time. So even just for myself going here, I'm thinking, okay, half magic, you know, using less magic, that means the cutscene will <laughs> go a little bit quicker in terms of the refill. You know, I wonder if uh, maybe pair like a, a charge, you know, like a sword swing to make, you know, save that little bit of magic, save, the, stay, save those frames, but... Uh, you know, obviously in terms of the rando, it's somewhat negligible and people don't worry too, too much, but... I'm still kind of fun to see. So Christos is going to be able to do something that Farim did not get to do, which is actually check checkerboard here with that mirror. That's very true. He's definitely getting a lot more worth in this immediate era check. 
I'm bummered. It's not gonna get it. Oh, it's okay, they took it a lot earlier. So disappointing, right? Um, all right, so where are you going, I get Brian? offended when people are like, I came at nothing. I'm like, I had a bomb upgrade. It's a little something. <laughs> but yeah, um, so Furime, um, a little bit different options here. Uh, could go straight into desert, but I'm going to check the purple and the tablet here, which is really good. And uh, I don't know, swamp would be pretty gutsy. Um, I feel like there probably is something in Swamp, uh, again, you know, p possibly the bow, but it's still quite a lead to go on this early. Yeah, and with Farime actually knowing where that red cane is, it's maybe a hard sell, and Christos is actually on the way to being able to discover that, so that'll be... That'll be interesting, but we, we still have no real way to use that red cane, unfortunately. Maybe in Ice Palace. Logically. Yeah, we're starting to ballneck a little bit here, so it's something we'll have to give. You know, we do have mitts, flippers, mirror, you know, hammer and everything. So we do have Hera and the mountain, so, you know, Chrysalis will have a, a very a very good time here. He'll have a lot of different options. In fact, um, doesn't look like we have information on Turtle Rock, but we could... Oh, uh, it's use... Ether. It's, it's, they're both Ether. They're both Ether. Okay, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. So we are lacking Ether on... Um, you know, it could be a case where one of our pendant dungeons, Swamp or Ice, is Ether, and then, you know, Turok might have our progression. You know, <laughs> but we'll try next, but, you know, however it works out, we are starting to ball neck, and we are going to have to make some difficult decisions here. Yeah, I mean, and, and Hera is a quick clear, and is one of our five, six crystals. That doesn't necessarily mean a lot with turtle rock being the other one but it's a nice one to get out of the way we also get to check ether tablet while we're up here and um i think you know, we can do spike cave as well with that blue bottle that they picked up yeah definitely i don't think they'll go for spike cave just yet they could it's not in logic but it does take a substantial amount of time in between these runners um Cutting those low corners becomes really impactful. You know, you might think, oh, well, it's, you know, conducive to, you know, the routes and everything. But in the end, you are investing quite a bit of time and with so much on the table. Um, it might be more of a late game check, but it would be pretty wild if there was progression in it that, you know, the logic eventually led it to and they could have had it early. Exactly. It's one of those very isolated locations. Like right now, Zora and Catfish are rather isolated. At least you can kind of do them together with the mirror in hand. But... You know, those are things that are just out of the way. And, you know, in Farame's mind, collecting the red cane is a bit isolated and out of the way, but it may come down to that. And that could give Christos an advantage since he's coming up here right now. He's seen that the red cane is up here and is probably going to just go ahead and pick it up. She may be waiting for something like finding the Aether medallion in order to, you know, make the mountain trip more worthwhile, willing to commit to the Turok dip. Um, Turok having a lot of worth, normally five items, and then with Mimic, six. So having Tronex locked off, um, potentially only five, but still five items. And given how much early progression they got to it, it could be a thing. Um, again, they could go to Pod, but it could be bow locked, and it is lantern locked. So that's not very appealing. Eastern, they can't really complete either without the bow. So they're really looking for, you know, stuff like ether or the bow, um, you know, and uh, trying to not go into a pendant dungeon, but I do think um, that might have to be the case here if Hera does not really pay out, which it, you know, it really could. If it had ether, that'd be pretty, pretty fun. Just walk straight over to Tarok. Ooh, that would be a tough call because it's, it's like, do you go to Meyer and leave the mountain and know that you can finish it, or do you go to Turtle Rock and make the gamble and potentially have to double dip? I mean, maybe you get lucky you find Ice Rod there, maybe you get lucky you find Bo there that leads to Ice Rod or something, but, you know, there's there's some interesting options. Yeah, absolutely. Still a lot of potential on the table, but yeah, we're just looking for the next item to give away into the logic. And, uh... Yeah, I'll know. Um, Ice Pal has three items. Swamp is uh, six, has the most items in the game. I'm really partial to Swamp myself, and given all their items, again, like, I, I would be really strong tempted to go Swamp, but, you know, not before checking her in the mountain here. So, 
Oh, and of course, with the book, uh, they can check the tablet. Crystal still does not have the tempered sword, um, which Ferran just ran right past in spectacle. But uh, I wonder if he'll get it soon here. Yeah, he might check it after Hera, I suspect. That's some thinking, but it would be easy to forget. And, you know, thankfully with the mirror and everything, like, it's not a big deal. Like, you just jump down, check that, and then go straight back over to Tarok. Um, so thankfully, that's not a problem. But this is one of those kind of things where you don't necessarily normally isolate it like that. Yeah, I think Christos grabbed that hook shot and just beelined it for East Death Mountain, which, I mean, does make a lot of sense. High item density. And yeah. I, I, I think it's fine if, if he gets it after Hera, but if he puts it off, then he's probably not even getting it. Oh, absolutely. Maybe. Yeah. Well, in Ferran's case, he didn't have the mirror, so he, he did make the little bit of the climb, and of course it was still early game, so it could have really honestly been anything in clean progression. In Chris's case, he had the mirror, so he, do he doesn't really have to worry about jumping down and then have to do the big loop across. But I guess it's the kind of situation where it might be a little bit less common, so hopefully, you know, like, like, I just feel like it's the kind of play where you might forget, but I don't suspect um, our players would. And pretty interesting that both of our players are here and Hera synced up at the 40 minute mark um, and about to get each get their third crystal. Now we know Christos has done a bit more of Thieves and we don't know what that green pendant yields and we don't know what's at the pedestal. We haven't read that either. But other than that, Thieves Town was a big bust. That's pretty interesting, I think, because, you know, oftentimes, you know, little routing things are really impactful in terms of your play but then you'll have players sync up and then you'll get to reevaluate their items um so obviously they're in the same tower uh, a screen apart but then you have to think about their checks and their items and what they've all done and how they differ and that's where you can see the little nuances in terms of routing and execution really start to shine they might be in the same area and in fact have done all the same checks or you know a player might have done a few more checks or something and it just really goes to show how important it is yeah, and you can see Farim gained a good bit of time there on that Moldorm fight by having the Tempered Sword. I mean, it was just a, a spin and a slash away from success. So, man, three crystals at the same exact time. We got Farim uh, checking some isolated locations like um, Bombo's Tablet and... Ooh, we're going for a basement play. Interesting. Yeah, so he is checking, which is really good. And uh, yeah, basement play, it's pretty interesting. Um, again, for Ahmed's case, uh, we're going to want to try to really hope for, you know, that ether or something while up here, just to make it, you know, go really smooth. Um, Christos, uh, going to get his temper here. But uh, no, I'll be very handy. All right, so where are we going from here? That is the real small, question. Small. <laughs> we got swamp we got ice we got pod we got a little bit of overworld a few different places we've got fluting to six <laughs> okay I mean, it's swamp and six like obviously he didn't hear me uh i should enunciate more clearly swamp no, I decided. Uh... Well, he might be doing it now. <laughs> I mean, he's going to this four portal, but this could be a play towards, you know, Pyramid Catfish Pod area. Zora. I think, yeah, I think in Chris's mind, he knows that he's going to have to make a tough decision, and he's already committed these turns and pay off. He knows that if Furon did not do these turns before, it is now more worthwhile for Furon to do these town. So, him having done it and not having found anything still might not have been a misplay in this case, or at the very least, um, it would have been, you know, uh, negated in terms of both players' options. So, you know, him just assuming, okay, Fran might have also have had to do, you know, these 10, these 10 was a good option. So now it's between very much logic locked pod um, and not being able to pair it with Eastern ice or swamp. Swamp has double the items, and uh, it's also objectively uh, the better dungeon, in my own opinion. So, <laughs> I'm a big fan of Swamp Palace because it's so item dense, and you know we're without a good number of items, so 
this is a uh, this is a good place to check. I mean, we need bow, we need ice rod, we need ether. Lamp is in the logic, but we just found it in swamp. So there we go. Yeah. So a little bit backwards. Lamp wasn't in ice, is in swamp, but uh, um, cl close enough. Both you know, H H two O is in there somewhere, but. Uh, yeah, it's kind of funny because in older logic, Swamp is actually a gold mine. It was very much worthwhile to go there. And during the different logics, it's kind of fallen in and out of value. And I think a lot more of uh, kind of almost like, not, I don't know if I'd say newer generation, but some more uh, recent logics and, and uh, newer players, they kind of see Swamp and like, oh, it's really long and all this. But it's, it's kind of funny just going through all the changes and everything, having Swamp actually be, you know, six items the most item dense dungeon and then at one point in time um it being you know just often very valuable and i think it kind of carried an unfair stigma um obviously you still want to be smart there are you know some objectiveness to these situations but i really you know jokes said i really do like his play here and of course here i'm doing a bit of a different play uh flushing out the village before he has to make that unfortunate decision Oh, I didn't see what was in hammer pegs, but it didn't look like it was worth Frime's time. Oh, hey! There's our ether. So Ooh. lamp and ether in swamp, that's really good. So Turok may may actually, in fact, um, possess the bow, but the lamp will open up quite a bit. And of course, ether opens up Turok. So now you have a new difficult decision to make between um, Turok opening. There's a crystal dungeon, so even if you do double dip, you are making a lot of progress and you don't have to go to a lot of the extra rooms. So even going to Turok now, I would not say it's a bad play either. Um, I would say it's a better play, in my opinion, than Pen and Ice. But there's still quite a few variables. Now with the Lantern opening up a lot more of Pod, uh, the progression might also be leading there. Um, we also now do have Mire. Uh, I, I kind of slipped my mind. We do have Samaria, so um, it would not yep. surprise me if they went to Meyer, um, actually, and then did that and, and tried I to. I think Meyer clearly would be like the way to go here. Yeah, pardon um, me. I kind of slipped my mind for a second. No, no, you're you're good. You're good. I mean, like Turtle Rock might have him. I like Turtle Rock, okay. I like <laughs> Turtle Rock too, but I also like Swamp, and I want them to check out the West Wing too, because maybe we'll get a bow and an ice rod and just be happy with ourselves. <laughs> yeah, version 26 and 27, I personally really loved Meyer. Meyer, like, I, I didn't care about his pendant. I, I just really favored Meyer, um, obviously, contextually. But, uh, you know, having, um, so obviously in terms of reading and looking at things, is telling to rock a little bit, but same medallion Meyer also open. Meyer um, being a crystal, Meyer is the very smart play to do. So yeah, do Meyer, and then after that, again, it'll filter things down a little bit. And if you're lucky, you'll get a bow or something to make a decision easier, or, you know, especially in the ice draw, I'd say. Um, but still some potential on the table here. If you're wrong, I'm going to do the catfish check now. Oh, Butter Sword on Argus. Okay. Uh, so. Can, uh, you know, here, you got your seafood and you got your butter. Seems, uh, you know, somewhat apropos. So that is definitely good. Christos is getting his red pendant. Um, I, I really doubt he's going to go to Ace, but he might just at this point be thinking, you know, why not? <laughs> but uh, no, again, Meyer and other decisions are much better. But it would be really funny, actually. Yeah, he, he could like be thinking commit. just, you know, just hard commit to that pedestal. Yeah. Just, well, I, I don't even need this book. Let's just go. And we don't know what's there. I mean, it very well could be the bow or the ice rod. Um, but we'll see what Zora has. This is new information for us. And then I believe there there is one more item, I want to say, um, here in Swamp. So Christos not going to leave any stone unturned. You'll see this from a, a lot of the players at the top of the bracket, not making these kind of big risks and leaving stuff behind like this because it can just be so crippling. It is it is really interesting because they did get two progression items, and uh, the left side of swamp is uh, a pretty big commitment. You have all the mire, you have pod area opened up, and you have um, in, you know all of Torok past. On try next. So this is a really interesting decision. Um, obviously, the way you play in tournament is different from how you play in a weekly, which is different from how you play in a you know in a daily maybe, which is how you you play differently from friends. There's a different mentality, a different type of metagame that you consider, you know, thinking about your opponent. Uh, this also ties into play style as well. You know, is Chris is worried about what Farim would do. 
you know, or is he just going to run his own game? And uh, so it's pretty interesting. But in terms of competent players, it's these little decisions that can entirely swing an, a game just because of the time investment. You, you always want to cut some corners, but you want to do it in a very intelligent manner. So with Christos, it's a little bit more of a toss up. I believe there are two more items, but he did with those two progression items open up a lot too. So it's, it's an interesting decision, but he, he might just feel that it's a little bit too risky or having checked so much of the other pendant dungeons before, he wants to make sure he doesn't isolate <laughs> oh anything. Oh my god! Can we get a bow That's here? That's really huge. That's actually... So there are three items. Okay, I thought there were two. So yeah, three items, that makes a lot more sense too. So oh, I start, wow. that's huge. So three items in Swamp. Ali! The dream. Uh, so... So I, I don't know. Turtle Rock. Yeah, it looks like it looks this like sea that's got where we're boring. Going. This sea got boring. We're not even going back. He's got straight. No, I think it's, it's fine. Good, I think <laughs> I think this is where you're gonna get six items and open up the pyramid fairy for two more. So I think it's pretty yeah, fine. Gr girlfriend's gonna be waiting in the pyramid for a bit. We got places to go. We got bows to get. We got Myers to complete. She, she's she's going to be waiting for a hot minute. Um, yeah. Chris is going to Tarok here. Um, people like to, uh, you know, try and leave it for GT. But uh, I think that's, you know, while it's nice in terms of the trip, I think, I, I don't know. I, I do like that he's going here. Um, I personally would believe that Bo is in here as opposed to, say, Meyer or another place. Um, yeah, I don't know. And go mode Tarok isn't that much different. And Meyer uh, is. So that might be Chris's thinking. Uh, go to Rock to try and hope that the bow isn't here. Um, push for an earlier go mode. All right, so Farim did pick up that ether and has elected to continue through the dungeon. I suspect with two items in the West Wing, they're probably going to go back. Yeah, again, like Ice Palace and other places be tempting, but six items and you're already here, and it does, you know, feel like the logical play. So, uh, it doesn't surprise me in the least, and finishing Swamp and not surprise me in the least either. Uh, obviously, skipping um, wouldn't be a bad play either, but in this case, we know it would be, but just so much on the table. I mean, like three items, it's it's too difficult. I think it was too. So yeah, like, I don't I don't anticipate from skipping, but let's see. Again, very competent players. There's a lot of different uh, you know types of thought and gameplay that go into uh, the randomizer. But ooh, save and quit at the waterfall chest in Swamp Palace. That does yeah. not bode well for Farai yeah. here. I don't know if Farim feels behind. I don't want to say that. Um, oftentimes players, you know, you'll visually see that they're behind and they'll make a decision and then you'll think, oh, they must do it because they feel behind. It's not necessarily the case. Again, this kind of goes to what I was saying earlier. Ooh, he's actually um, saying out oh, the spooky action glitch, it looks like, um, which can be explained a little bit later if it should come up, uh, just because it is a little bit to explain. But um, again, Meyer on the table, right? Pendant Ice Palace. Torok is now open. Fran got solid progression, and this is kind of a trap that you run into. Um, you know at a top level your opponent's competent. You know Chris is Owen has put in the time, he knows logic, you know he's he's a strong player. Um, going for a Brahmin mate block fast, which is uh, really nice of him. Um, one of my favorite techniques. But uh, Super swag. Yeah, it actually is the fast strat if the RNG facilitates for it. There is about um, a, a good core four strats to that room that you need to learn if you want to do it optimally. And uh, the Brahmin Meat Block Last is one of them, but you can't always do it. Even if you do it, it doesn't mean it'll always work or it's the best thing to do. But uh, um, in this case, the RNG did allow for it and he did perform it, so that was very good of him. Uh, Fran Gang, unfortunate for Snake RNG there, but yeah, again, this is still a good decision from Furime. This is not, in this case, the winning decision, which is unfortunate. Now, this is how Rando goes. That's entirely an nature turn randomizer. Yeah, and I suspect Furime will be going into Turtle Rock before going back to Swamp. I think that that gamble has been more or less committed to at this point, but we'll see. Yeah, and again, as viewers, we can see it. 
but in terms of their mental state, their gameplay, the meta, you know, you know your opponent's good. If you do every safe check, you will lose. You cannot do that. You can rely on execution to a point, but when your opponent has similar execution, um, it's no longer an advantage, it's a mitigation. You are now on the same field, and then it's your decision making. If you make all the same decisions, but played it a little bit worse, you're done. If you make all the same decisions, but play the same, it's a toss up and you got GT. So even that alone isn't good enough. You do need to cut a corner and the corner that you pick, you know, will be the huge swing. Furime cut these town and now he's cut Swamp. So he is definitely going for the gold. Um, and unfortunately in this case, it's gonna burn him a little bit and Chris has played it a little bit safe and this time he's rewarded. Again, different play styles, different methodologies and a lot going into everything. Yeah, and I think that also came into play with the the early commitment to uh, to Swamp by Christos. He did not clean up those overworld areas like Farim did, and Farim knew that those overworld areas did not pay off. So, I mean, I think Farim is trying to cut corners in Swamp, but that just doesn't work out here for him. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And it's pretty interesting, and I think one of the, a bit of the fun is here is, is you get to see two racers, and you get to identify with different racers to go, okay, this person plays like how I play, or I would make that decision, and uh, of course, consequently, I would never make that decision, why would you ever do that? Um, which can be pretty fun, but uh, Chris and I have talked about logic, whatnot, for the most part, and I think we have some pretty similar philosophies. Um, I, I feel like he's warned out to Swamp a little bit more lately, um, very smart player. Uh, but yeah, although uh, just reading the swamp, not wanting to go into village. Um, I mean, you gotta find your items somewhere and you invest it somewhere and you know, you just can't be afraid. And uh, you know, swamp worked out here, might not work out next time, but just read the logic correctly in this case. Yeah, swamp being one of those few dungeons that you can you can go mode or ignore entirely if it's a pendant. It's, it's a very appealing to just delay and delay and delay. But when there's actually something there, like the payoff is just enormous for making that play and, and going for it. So it's just yeah, definitely. So so interesting to see when players will pull the trigger. Hey, a mushroom. Uh, psilocybin mushrooms. We can uh, go trade in at the witch at some point. Uh, the flute makes it very convenient and could even <laughs> uh, pair it with catfish. So even though you isolate catfish, um, this will help consolidate that a little bit, she choose. And does have the opportunity to do the magic bat glitch with the red cane in hand, so might see that check prior if we don't find the bow here on Trinex. And on, yeah, okay, <laughs> I was gonna say, um, front screen, <laughs> that half heart, but uh, no fear here. Yeah, did did opt to finish Meyer. Which again makes a lot of sense. That was kind of like what we were talking about. Um, obviously, Chris got the ice rod, so that changed everything. But uh, you know, again, going with the smart option of Meyer. Now I have to wonder for Frime. Skip these town. Skip swamp. Um, so, I mean, Lantern did open up more of the pod area, and that's Ice Palace. So it's between the two. But considering gambling the other two pendant dungeons, um. Yeah, I'll know. This is a really interesting decision. Christos not quite getting <laughs> that zero cycle. Having a little bit of trouble getting these heads. Might get another cycle here. Uh, I don't think either player has touched Eastern, um, and neither have ever gone to Pod. Pod is not in the logic at all. Um, Pod is now much more in the logic for Frime. So between Eastern, the Mirror, and Pod, I suspect Furime will go to the Pod Eastern area, um, especially having left um, these town and, and uh, Swamp prematurely. I shouldn't say prematurely necessarily, but you guys know what I mean. Um, and then Pen and Ice Palace is like, gamble the other two to go to Ice. Like, I, I just don't think that'll be an option. You know, hope that the bow is trolling you and being in one of its native uh, kind of areas and then go from there. Yeah, it's that or, or Turtle Rock, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's... It's a tough call, right? It's like, this is... Yeah, we have, it's... We have all we need to get through here, but... Like, the, the thing is that, you know, obviously you might be reading that something like the bows in Turok, but you're, 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 
committing to a potential double dip either way, but Pod has five items potentially, plus three in Eastern, and Lantern opens up everything except the boss of each, not counting both side of Pod. Uh, Fioran will know the potion glitch, so that's not a thing. So you're looking at five items in TR plus Mirror, which makes six, um, not counting Trinex, holding out. And then you have your five items plus three in Pod Eastern area. But yeah, he, he's reading that the bow is going to be in Torok, which is a very common thing to happen. Or I should say, it's a common thing in this kind of situation to come up. It's not surprising. So his play absolutely makes a lot of sense. But unfortunately, we know that this will not um, work out very well for him, unfortunately. No, it looks like Turtle Rock was, was pretty dry there. Mushroom not even given anything for us. So, I, ironically, we might, in fact, run into a situation where um, Bo is, in fact, in Eastern or Pod area, or it might go even further back to where I, I joked about Bo in Swamp and ice and Lantern in Ice. It might be that the Lantern is, in fact, in Swamp and uh, the Bo is in Ice. Uh, not too sure, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, as viewers, we understand what, you know, the, the more, um, the, the, the better play in this case would be. But given the situation, this is not you know, a bad play at all. It's just how the randomizer develops uh, in terms of the logic and reading and its overall flow. So we know Meyer is a bust in terms of items. Obviously the crystal is good. Um, I suspect that Christos will be doing Pyramid Fairy shortly and then maybe jumping into to Pod Eastern, maybe turning in that green pendant finally. I feel like that's probably where where he's going, but what do you think? Yeah, um, I definitely could see Chris has gone to that area. Um, again, Lantern opened up a lot. You have the pendant. Um, you will have Pyramid Fairy. So again, you know, go uh, you know, go go pick up your girlfriend on the way to uh, to Pod. Kind of wrap that in together a little bit, maybe. Um, I think that'd be a very strong route. If only she could come with us. It's like these fairies just get like bound to their lakes like can they just not like, why, why don't why don't they come with us and help us out a little more i feel like without the presence of water they have difficulty maintaining corporeal form so maybe in fact when you contain one within a bottle you're holding a little bit of water within the bottle too um mm. it's hard to say that atmosphere could be dry especially given this season um but that is my current working theory I just figured they needed to drink water. And, you know, that's where that's where a lot of civilization started, like near rivers and, and lakes and things. So I mean, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So both players kind of just train their area. Um, There, there could be a potential situation where Fram will get the mushroom, and because in the mirror, uh, will in fact go outside the laser bridge. Mirror, flute to the witch's hut, trade in the mushroom, and really hope that that's the ice rod. Uh, that kind of play would or not surprise do me. Or fake powder and find bow, or something. <laughs> fake fake that could be, be ridiculous, insane. but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I have mixed feelings about fake powder. I never go for it myself. I feel like it's kind of like almost like a. Like a meme strat. I don't know. I've never been burnt by it, so again, I have my own bias towards it, but it definitely is something they could do. Um, and if nothing else, it's a cool trick to do. So, you know, personal philosophy and uh, result will definitely play a factor. But yeah, um, the, the, the point is that if Furama has a lot of light world locations left, uh, it can check there's a bridge, mirror, and then check those items, and then quickly hop back down into the laser bridge area. Yeah, that's um, definitely a clever thing to do. And since you can't even beat the dungeon anyways, you want to leave. So that's that's not a bad way to do it, to keep some insurance in case you do get that ice rod. But we know it's in the west wing of Swamp, so Grime will be very disappointed there. But if there happens to be something on fake powder and, like, powders that'd be ridiculous. or pedestal I, I or mean... something, that could be kind of, kind of a, a little bit of an equalizer. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be jumping on my chair right then. Yeah, like how you said, uh, it almost sounded like you were sad when you when you mentioned Swamp, and yeah, unfortunately for him, kind of... You have to be really careful when you throw a bomb. If you pick up a pot when you throw a bomb, you'll actually clip the bomb through the wall. And uh, sometimes you can also have the bomb bounce back at you really quick, um, away from the explosion zone. So 
uh, of course, as a player, you throw the bomb and you can assume that the bomb will blow up the wall. And then you walk down and you're like, oh, wait, I can't do that. Okay, I need to respace myself. And then you go up and the list is like, you know, gotcha. And uh, <laughs> it, it can be a problem. But uh, if you've ever, especially in GT, in, in the bomb test room, if you have thrown a bomb at the model floor, and then for whatever reason the bomb has clipped through the wall or not blown out the floor, you might accidentally be picking up the pot too quickly and clipping the bomb through the wall. Um, so just something to be aware of. Those two spots are the biggest offenders. Risto's going for some pretty risky strats here, getting down to two hearts, but he's fine. He's got that that big butter sword. It's another crystal down. Two to go. Gotta find that bow, though. Yeah, no, uh, Chris is, is pretty comfortable at the moment. Um, again, the most difficult decision he'll have to make is uh, um, <laughs> like not finding anything in, in the kind of pod eastern area and uh, maybe going ice or thinking it's pendant or something like that. And I'll know th th there are a few options to him, but he's still a little bit on rails here. But speaking yeah, he of does, on rails. He does have some like out-of-the-way checks available like Graveyard yeah, Ledge and Catfish and Zora that we might see him clean up here. Uh, Hammer Pegs is one of them. Looks like we're gonna see a pedestal check right now, so this may determine his uh, commitment to Ice Palace right now. Yeah, this is a very smart idea. Um, obviously, Pot Eastern area, but uh, he, he has not checked this stuff yet, and as well, he has the book. And so this will inform uh, an ice palace decision. Have a little fun with a the thief there. Oh yeah, definitely fun. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no matter what you do, blue returns to you. So defeat your Ainen to get your red. Defeat your penance to get your blue. Sounds normal. Oh, Maybe yeah. not. All right, dodging a bullet there, but that's going to put off Ice Palace. Uh, Christo's going to go ahead and just turn in the green pendant here, electing not to go through the portal. That was pretty interesting. Um, if you come in from that uh, east... Oh, wow! Thief's Town paying off with Bo! And that, I is believe so that is so rude. Oh, that is so wow. rude. That was so good. Oh my goodness, poor Furaim. Yeah. And hey, look, look, wait, look, look, wait, he's going for Alu. Get excited! Oh yeah, this oh. is gonna be something good, everyone. Yeah. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Silver arrow. And we get that Bombos medallion. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, but wow. Um, so Chris is going <laughs> into the eastern portal there. Um, uh, so you, you could have done the mirror, but just went straight for the pennant. Um, sometimes the way you route into this area, um, you, you might check the green pen as the very last thing. But wanting to not, not, not wanting to go without, he checks the pen first. You know, to, to get his closure on these town and is in fact rewarded, and now he is he's is just laughing. He uh, you, you can tell in his movement too; he's really feeling it. Um, menus and everything looking pretty sharp. These town paying off. Swamp left side, you know, not just swamp. Swamp left side paying off. I imagine he feels really good right now. Um, here I'm in a much more difficult Pirime. position, unfortunately. Oh man, both of those things. We're skipped by Farim, so this is this is absolutely devastating for Farim. Yeah. This is how it goes. Again, this is nothing is. against any any player. Both very talented. Um <laughs> well there's your bombos. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man. Uh, this is a great seed, but I, I don't know, <laughs> like for different reasons. But uh yeah, no, um, it should be noted that oftentimes people might focus on a result, like, oh, how come this person didn't do as well in Swiss? Or how come this person didn't go as far in bracket? Or, you know, that kind of thing. But many players, you know, the players are very talented, and sometimes you just turn into situations like this. This is why brackets are beautiful. This is Swiss, um, obviously substantial currently to Christos. There's still Aris left, but 
you know, it's the kind of thing where, like, oh, okay, well, you know, it's just, you know, the, the one and done. You can't really adapt. You know, your playstyle itself might have cost you the race. And this is, you know, kind of a, the boon to having a, a stronger format in brackets where you can have a next match. Even if your rhyme is down here, there's still another match. You know, there's still lots to go. Very talented runners. There's nothing against them in terms of their play or whatever. This is different philosophies. This is a different seed. Uh, this is different adaptation to each player. So, you know, Again, there's still a lot of race left, you know, it, it would be, um, I think, inappropriate to call it too early, but obviously strong advantage to Christos currently. He is well poised and now is going through to try and clear dungeons and go to GT. Yeah, I mean, it could have easily been fine for Farime to skip all those things, and, and maybe that'll happen in, in game two, which, by the way, is tomorrow. Scheduled or tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, so... Um, and Farime is on the right path now in Thieves Town, finishing this out to get that bow. So, I mean, all things said, you know, Farime did a lot of other checks that Christos didn't do on the Overworld, and they just didn't happen to pay off in this seed. Maybe completely different next time. And when you're at the top of the brackets, like, it can just be one gamble that turns the tide. In this case, it was a couple, but, you know, it's it can just take one gamble, and then Farime's back to one and one, and they're going to a game three, so. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah, see Farime doing very good in the prison there. Um, you can cancel your input uh, either to a diagonal or what I do is to kind of roll the input from left to up left, um, or you know right to up right, to dash, and then use the little bit of the lip of the doorway in order to keep walking forward. So very, uh, you know, very efficient, uh, good execution there. Again, that's the kind of stuff that you'll practice or get used to, or really be more aware of when you run NMG. Um, you know, again, both these players very strong in terms of that. And if anyone is looking to update or not, I shouldn't say update, or like, like upgrade or to, you know, work on some of their gameplay. Um, I do encourage learning the speedrun. Um, I think for some there's a stigma to it, but there are a lot of benefits and little subtle things that you might not be aware of. Like even this blind fight, um, a lot of people might struggle, but if you know how to do the fight, especially, learn, you know, coming from speedrun, you know, you learn that it's on a script. And so far, Furaim is skipping, or er, skipping, sticking to that script. Pardon me, um, the coffee kind of making me mince words a little bit, but very good fight from Furaim there. Really nice, and grabs one piece of the puzzle here, that green pendant. Um, so Christos did have quite a long Palace of Darkness here, decided to go to the back to look for the big key, but the big key was actually in the vanilla location. So Christos Ooh. ending up kind of uh, wasting a bit of time there. But uh, now we got to see if Farime makes their way back into Swamp. Yeah, I think uh, most people, uh, when they count keys in the front portion, you know, they'll kind of see if they got two items, and if they did, they'll know that there has to be a small key in that location. Uh, Christos kind of got locked out, so maybe the, the way he was doing the key logic, um, he didn't think that the big key was going to be there, or he just gambled that it wasn't going to be. But, you know, either way, he's now making his way through. And if you're I'm going to mirror the uh, pestle check here. I don't know if I've actually seen that uh, blue boomerang text before, so that's, that's pretty interesting, but oh, <laughs> absolutely not worth. <laughs> yeah. I love the blue boomerang. Uh, don't tell Vitorp that, because I always tell him I don't, because that's his favorite item. But <laughs> it's uh, not worth it. No, definitely. Um, again, the, the main boon of the boomerangs would be to uh, facilitate for a more convenient menuing, and also to open up the prize pack. And there are times where there are new strategies and even speed techs that the boomerangs uh, would come into play. The red boomerang actually has some of its own strategies, and a lot of the times the two are synonymous. Of course, people know that the extra sprites on the screen will cause the game to lag a bit more, but uh, the red boomerang actually can do some tricks a bit easier and has its own benefit, but uh, not enough to, you know, obviously clear it three pence and go pull it. Or, I guess, um, for the blue, and then, of course, Aga for the red. 
But Chris is Owen getting his crystal here. Uh, going to Mirror, I suspect, to go get his Eastern Palace uh, crystal. And then, of course, it'll be our favorite time near the end of the game. But it's still a little bit from that. Casual, one hour, 14 minutes, first player enters Eastern Palace. Easy game. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, seen some uh, some uh, one fourteen ish finish times in this tournament, but uh, one fourteen Eastern uh, go mode finishing up to go GT. Yeah, still still Pretty a very rare. good seed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, going into pe pennant dungeons and, and kind of going a little bit all over. No, it's was, it was very good. Oh yeah. Definitely a solid time. Um, Farime did pick up the bow there, so is going to be probably a little bit sad about that, but also excited to be able to, you know, full clear two dungeons, and Farime will be full clearing both of these dungeons looking for that ice rod, and will be severely disappointed. Yeah, nice little uh, kiki shimmy from Farime there. Um, obviously the graphic makes it look like there are stairs, but those are in fact just normal tiles leading up to the dungeon. And Kiki walks very slowly. So you saw Farime, this is again like kind of, one of those little NMG speedrun things that you pick up on. You can line these in the rando too, of course, but um, you know, it's just one, one thing that's very standard that you'll see. But he'll do the shimmy, Kiki walks slower. So by doing that, he actually scoots Kiki closer to the door. And then that means that the dungeon opens up a little bit quicker. So, you know, just even displaying these little techniques and knowledges just goes to show the depth of these players, you know, the time they put in, you know, how much they know Zelda, not just the rando, but they know, you know, the nature and mechanics of Zelda itself. All right, we'll see if Farime ends up getting this vanilla big key early on because that will certainly help with the routing through here in terms of getting that big chest. Uh, so Chris is not getting the best Zelda gamer RNG, but uh, still dealing with it really well. Yeah, and we still haven't found those silver arrows that could save a little bit of time at this point. But it's not something that either of these players are going to go out of their way to find. Yeah, definitely. Um, if Chris is still on uh, Master, obviously Silvers would be huge. Silvers are a nice time save, but if you end up spending the same amount of time at the time would it take to, uh, you know, just not have the Silvers, then you end up eating up that time. In this case, they'll grab chests that are convenient to try and find them, but nothing too out of the way. Yeah, we saw the compass chest grab there from Christos. He just he was like, "Oh, there's a chest here. I'm gonna pick it up. I already have the big key, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for it." Yeah, definitely. You would uh, with with um, tempered uh, or uh, or butter. You would need twelve charge spins. Um, you could actually also do twelve slashes of butter in phase four of Ganon. But either way, you need to do um, twelve strikes. So you know the silvers would save some time, but not as much time. Um, and uh, just having the sword upgrade is, is just really huge. Again, if it was master, it'd be different because it'd be 24. But, uh, Alu, you know what time it is? Oh, yeah, it's that time when we're going to Ganon's Tower. Christos Owen is going to be entering Ganon's Tower shortly. So get your guesses in the chat. I see a lot of you already know the drill. One through 22. Got 22 locations. Pick a number, one through 22. Where is the big key for Ganon's Tower? Because that's all we need to beat the game. Where is it going to be? Uh, in terms of stock numbers, I like to go 7 and 12, and then sometimes 22 if I want to see uh, just a strong executional finish. In this case, I'm feeling 13, so I'm going to go 13. That's completely different! Well, <laughs> 3. No, but that's fine. I, I like when you're feeling lucky here. It's Yeah, it just kind of came to my mind, and... I would say, okay, let's let's go 13. Fair enough. How about you? I'm going... I always change it up. I, I go for different numbers every time, so... I don't know, I haven't, I haven't seen 18 in a while, so let's go 18. Sounds good. Real quick, um... If, uh, if you cancel your dash, and you're one pixel away from the tower, you'll actually open the tower up a little bit quicker. You'll save on some lag frames. 
But uh, Crystal's Owen, 118.50-ish, entering GT, goes to right side first. The strategy I like to do um, is I like to go to the first two right and then the rest of the left, and then I make a decision for full left or right. I think most people, they tend to go to the right, you know, if they get a key, maybe go on, or they'll go to the left and then kind of, you know, switch between the two. Those are two pretty standard plays, but uh, no key here, so Chris is not going to the right. So item number three, Kane of Berna. So it looks like Chris will probably end up going full left here, which is much more standard play and not having the key makes sense. He might mirror and choose to go to the full right, which I've kind of self dubbed the Dark Magician Girl strat, but uh, I'll see what he has to do here. Yeah, I mean, checking these chests quickly, seeing if you get the big key in the Stalfos room, you can just mirror right on out and head up the tower. But it's looking like seven chests down, no big key. Yeah. My, my guess is that the key is going to be on the right side, or um, if not the right side, then Bob and Armos. Uh, a lot of people don't end up going full right. Um, I don't mean full right from going right and then just straight. I mean, it is quicker to get to Bob and Armos if you go from the right side. So if you kind of have a feeling that the key will be on the right side, you could actually hear mirror and then go to the right, and then you wouldn't actually be um, down in terms of any time between the left. But yeah, I feel like the key is probably going to be on the right side or um, Bob and Armos, but we'll see. That was seven, right? Uh, that was our eighth item location. Oh, oh, pardon me. Yes, and we are approaching yeah. number nine here in the Fire Snake room, and then we've got four more in Rando room before we get to to Bob's chest and Armos. So, I mean, Rando room, definitely one that we've seen the big key in quite a bit as well. But yeah, here's here's the big payoff room for the left side. I feel most people feel. Just because of the four chests and uh, no other way to Bob get there. Yeah. Yeah, for I'm finishing up a uh, pod here. Just imagine Eastern right after. Yeah, so indeed, uh, it is right or Bob and Armos. Um, have to see, but so far, not a left side. So that's 13 chests down. For I'm going to be full clearing Eastern Palace, so we'll likely be getting the item at the Vanilla Big Key location. So again, spending more time because they don't have the Ice Rod, cannot go mode this dungeon, which is quick in all honesty, but still, just all of that adds up. And that's yeah, why we see a very large di discrepancy in their times uh, based on where they are right now. Yeah, so powder at uh, Bob Chest there. Something that's obviously very fun as a viewer, and uh, especially a player, is that you watch players and you kind of look at what you might do as you play. Um, so of course, going through the tower here, um, you know, you kind of you kind of think of your own route and your own guesses. Um, yeah, although, what, what, do you, did you have a plan that you would have done had you entered here? Or is there a route I, that you like to do? I think, I, I mean, not finding the small key on the the right side there i would have definitely gone the same way christos did there um just because you know that's where you have to go i mean you have to go left side and while you're already on the left side you might as well just follow through is kind of my logic but if i'm feeling behind i will absolutely make some crazy plays like dark magician strategies where you go into stalfos room and mirror back or I'll check the tile room first. I, I'll commit to that if if I'm feeling behind or if I'm feeling lucky. I, I kind of just get, go with the flow and don't necessarily pick a certain path. Yeah, for for me, given this case, I uh, I like to go first to right, and then again I kind of like make a little bit of a judgment call. So in this case, I felt that I would have gone to the first two right, gone to left, and then mirrored and gone full right. Um, I'm partial to going right in general. I find it to be a uh, very fun. Um, and again, because you do get to Bob and Armas quicker and whatnot. And indeed, there is our key on the right. I think that was number 19. So close. Yeah, it's not quite 13. And uh, yeah, but that's uh, okay. So Chris is Owen now going up the gauntlet. And now, of course, most people really look to the execution at this point. Execution is always prevalent, but this is where you don't really have to think about it too, too much. Again, maybe a chest for silvers, 
Um, Chris is going to have to be very careful with his hosts here. Um, <laughs> a little bit of the muscle memory factoring in um, needs to be careful. Obviously, he will have enough arrows from both these mimics, but very easy to do. Thankfully, there are five there. Um, within the normal prize pack, the mimics can drop arrows, but in this case, even if he got silvers, he'd only have two. Yeah, there are a couple opportunities to pick up some more arrows uh, coming up here, but there are there are a few, <laughs> so you gotta be sparing if you are gonna be checking those chests at the top of GT looking for silvers anyways. Yeah. Uh, Chris is taking a walk through the Ganball Z room. Um, he did get a worse RNG there. Um, in the first portion, there are a couple different cycles, but you can you can uh, account for them. But in the latter portion, it's kind of a toss-up whether you'll get a favorable uh, cannonball RNG. But uh, just kind of walks it off, and uh, you know that is certainly good. But, uh, what is you know preferred in, the, in that scenario? Into Gauntlet Four, about to be in Gauntlet Five. For him, I think is going. Yeah, he's going for the bomb jump. Yeah, yeah. since Farim <laughs> did do the same. Uh, routing is Christos, where he left behind the big key in the vanilla big key location in Pod. He decided to jump over to Eastern, see if he could get go mode, but that didn't pay off. So now coming back here again. Yeah. Yeah, again, if you're familiar with NMG, uh, so he's familiar with the hammer yump, you need two Y coordinate pixel perfect positions. Um, your X coordinate for both the bomb placement and your own placement doesn't matter too much. You don't want to be too far from the bomb, but overall, you're really looking to get um, a Y coordinate specific bomb placement and then a Y coordinate specific uh, link placement so that link will um, go clear across horizontally to clip into the southern portion of the rail. For I'm hard committing to that Swamp Palace skip and yeah. jumping right into ice. He, yeah, he, he really has to. Um, yep. He, he's, yeah, he, he's doing exactly what he should be doing. It's just, again, unfortunate as if you were um, still another race after this, you know, by all means, you know, do not count him out whatsoever. Very, very proficient runner. Unfortunate situation, but he is making the smart play. Um, has not been to ice, has dipped Swamp. Swamp did have some progression. Went to Thieves Town, got progression. Uh, check with Pestle. Pestle doesn't have progression, but at this point, you're now in your third, you know, pen dungeon. Nothing is really surprising you. Yeah, and I mean, that actually shows the level of skill of Farim is being able to realize even your position and that you are behind and that you do need to make this, you know, more risky play. Yeah. So I, I do think that that actually shows off more proficiency. Real lies, real lies, real false. Chris is having a little issue with Moldurm too here. Moldurm's is kind of like that. Um, yeah, the power up story makes it better, but uh, it's still a very chaotic boss. So, last chest here. Yeah, we'll check it. Um, no silver arrows, but a good check to do. He saved four arrows, too. He was helping. Uh-huh. Yeah, so now the Aga 2 fight. Um, people are pretty familiar. You hope for no more than three cycles. If the RNG is good, you can get two. Um, the first cycle, Aga will always shoot an orb. The clones will always also shoot the yellow orbs. They're actually kind of like red, but whatever. Um, <laughs> after this, it's a 50-50 if the real Aga will shoot blue balls. Um, up to two cycles, so there is one 50-50. This will be another 50-50, and then after it will go to a guaranteed, um, you know, a colloquially referred to yellow orb, and then it will go back to, it will to Pete, uh, the RNG cycle. The real Aga, I think I watched that on MTV or something. <laughs> it was good. It was a good show. Yeah, definitely. And it's got his mixtapes. You know, number one hit. <laughs> All right, so. Straight out of tower. Into here we pyramid. go into the Ganon fight. We have the Butter Sword, the Golden Sword. So it's just six slashes in the first two phases. 
and then we're just gonna have to to break some floors, get Ganon to help us out here. Yeah, four phases. Um, with the first phase, you need twelve masses or you need uh, twelve masses hard spins. A masses hard spin is the same as a tempered slash, so then it would be twelve slashes. Or um, a tempered spin is the same as butter slash, and so six slashes. Um, with the butter sword for phase one and also for phase two they are synonymous in that regard phase three needs three strikes in order to advance it does not matter on the damage and then phase four uh, it depends on what your arsenal is in this case with the butter sword it will take 12 butter slashes because it is the same as a timbered spin or a, uh, a butter spin um, it is also the same a charge spin has more active frames than a slash, so even with butter, you'll see runners do a charge spin in order to make sure that their active frames are constantly within the hurt box of Ganon, um, so that they don't miss a single uh, frame in terms of damage potential. See that Chris Zoan is already on um, phase four, so very few warps. If you activate the left torch before the right torch goes out, you'll get uh, a torch glitch where the right will never go out. It is particularly useful if you have Master Sword because um, magic management becomes a factor. But between butter and half magic, uh, even if you miss a torch glitch, it would not matter too much. But it would cost time. Meanwhile, Farime is out of options, I believe, and must go back into Swamp Palace. So this is, yeah. again, unfortunate, but, you know, finally gonna find what they need to, to progress here, that ice rod. The, the takeaway here is that it looks like Ferran tried to go for a, another anti-fairy skip, but unfortunately it was just a little bit off. It's definitely tricky to do. Uh, I think the dash was kept a little bit too long, I'm not sure. But uh, back in Swamp making, you know, the unfortunate choice and is going to see uh, the dot done here and... Uh, well, this is how it goes, but GG's to one Mr. Christos Owen. He has finished in first place with an Esther 2 time of 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 46 seconds. So just shy of that sub-130, but that's okay. It was still wonderfully played. Yeah, congratulations to Christos Owen taking game one of the series. Remember, this is a best of three, so if Rhyme is not out of it, we're going to have game two tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but I believe we're gonna we're gonna try to grab Christos in here for an interview. So it'll be it'll be exciting to hear how he felt about this and his play, a you know, reasonably early play into Swamp Palace. Yeah, and Christos did put a message into the speed racing chat and typed that was a semicolon vertical slash. <laughs> so. Uh... Well, it'll be interesting to see uh, his reaction here. But in the meantime, I can appreciate Frime's gameplay. Um, yeah, and I've seen many a player make this same gamble um, here in Swamp, and sometimes it is the difference between, like, this can help you win, too. So I, I I don't fault for rhyme at all for making this choice, and ooh, it's nice swag hookshot clip there. Yeah, it's definitely fun to see. That's something that you won't see in NMG, because uh, obviously you get the hookshot after. So again, both NMG and Rando, um, they're a beautiful blend of different strategies and uh, you know kind of thought processes. And that's why I kind of, I kind of personally. He <laughs> just doesn't even check the right. Just gets that, just gets that ice and, and um, Audi. Um, which, you know, makes sense. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, between both games, um, obviously the same same core game, but between both different modes, um, a beautiful blend of different strategies and uh, applications. And so again, like I personally advocate for both. Um, if you want to get better at rando, you know, learn learn the speed run. Um, you know, obviously get familiar with Rando first, but once you get your bearings, uh, I would recommend it. Um, just tighten up some gameplay. And then if you play a speedrun, you know, it can, it can, you know, the Rando is great for a refresher or to test different types of skills. You know, maybe a first sword Mothila fight. Um, that's personally very exciting. Um, you know, Hammer Moth, different strategies. Both of them bring a lot to the table. Yeah, we even did see a difference in you know, their sword in this in this game, and I don't think that really affected, you know, 
know, much of Christos' execution being on Master Sword for that long. I think the Tempered really came into play for, for bosses like, you know, Vitreus and, and Trinex for this particular seed, since we were able to uh, avoid Cold Stare entirely. Yeah, definitely. See, so, yeah, for Rhyme, of course, uh, continuing on through Turok, so, you know, it's easy to uh, to be frustrated or to, you know, even like even to forfeit just to save the time or to, you know, call the rates, you know, completely respectable, very fine. But, you know, being a good sport or, uh, you know, just, you know, very much uh, loving the rando and want to, you know, keep playing as much as you can uh, going through here to, uh, you know, just continuing. So, you know, very good on him putting, you know, still a bit more of a show for the viewers. Um, and it's actually going to be a quick trip back to Trinex since we've actually full cleared the dungeon already. So we just, uh, other than Trinex, obviously, so doesn't have to worry about that at all. Uh, can ignore Pyramid Fairy, can just go straight into Ganon's Tower. Maybe, maybe we'll see Farai pick up that big key a little earlier if if uh, maybe they pull a Dark Magician strat or something. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, one other thing here, this room with the Hokubokus, um, or uh, most people kind of refer to as pokies. There are 16 different RNG patterns, and uh, you know, of course, Farai'm already entering the room, pulling out his sword and uh, ring to attack them. He actually got one of the worst uh, Hokuboku RNGs in the room. Uh, that is one of the slowest patterns you can get, but you know, dealing with it appropriately. And here is our winner of game one of this. Top 16 match, Christos Owen. Congratulations. <laughs> Good games. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> that was a six seed, bro. How'd it go? Uh, it was a real test of my nerves, honestly. I had some pretty difficult decisions to make, and I was feeling pretty disappointed early on with my Thieves Town time investment into a pendant and got nothing from it, so I wasn't feeling great. And then Having to make a decision to dive into another pendant or swamp, I was just thinking this is not a good position to be in. And then once I found the ether, like I had progression, I could go to Myra or Turtle Rock. I was like, do I leave? Do I stay? Like this is a fair few minutes. And like, that's what I mean about uh, testing my nerves. I was just like, no, we're going to stay. They're never going to bail on a pendant dungeon if we can explore it. And I'm so pleased that I did when I saw the ice rod. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was something that we noted too. Um, obviously, you went into a Thieves Town. I would say a little bit, a little bit early, um, just going for the play uh, between four items and a green pendant. You know, five. You know, it, uh, it, it's certainly a logical play to kind of go for. And then you get to the end, you know, like I found nothing, and you know, there's still a decent, you know, bit of the game on the table. So you have to think that, you know, maybe went a little bit prematurely. You know, there might have been some other progression that might have led you away or informed the decision, but you know, went through it, and so of course that would weigh on your mind. But you know, at least you had the pendant, and you know, could kind of hold on to that little hope. And then without the hammer too, that was a uh, was pretty, pretty bold play. Um, but you know, I definitely like it. And then of course again, you know, it's coming down to okay, well I got pen and ice, I got a pen and swamp, I got like a little bit of like village, like nothing really looking appealing, but personally very proud of you <laughs> for going into swamp. But uh, <laughs> of course, you know, the the lantern and ether. And then again, yeah, um at the time I thought you there was only two items left. So I would not have been surprised had you left because you and Meyer. And then of course, you know, bow into a rock in that situation. Uh, you know, there, there were a lot of different pulls, a lot of different baits, um, but with three items, you know, it's it's a big gamble. Obviously, felt bad with the Thieves' Town, but, you know, you don't want to go, okay, well, I missed out with the Thieves' Town, so I'm going to cut corners in, in Swamp, and then it turns out one of those corners was good, one of those corners was bad. You know, it's it's kind of like, you know, almost let like you double down in a way, and then, of course, the three items it did make sense. So, right. and then just everything paid off, so, like, it almost seemed like it showed in your gameplay that you just played really well. And you're just like, okay, things are getting better, <laughs> despite things being really sketchy. So it was a bit of a mix. I, I my execution was really good for the first half, and then it got really poor, by, for like my standards. So when I got into Turtle Rock, and um, from that point forward, I just was making really sloppy bits of execution. Um, but the way I viewed it is, like, I feel like I played that really conservatively rather than making gambles. I feel like leaving Swamp mid like completion was the gamble and staying yeah. was the conservative choice. 
Um, and same with Thieves Town. Like when I first went in, I like you said, I do, I do think I went in early, like on reflection. Um, I kind of wish I'd gone down to Hyper Cave first because um, it would have informed my decision better and just made these down better because I would have had the hammer so I would have known I could have at least full cleared it if there was an item in the big chest. Um, but yeah, when I went in, I was planning to just like death warp out um, after the first four, but since I only had one item there, I was like, there's pretty decent odds I'm going to find like something deeper in. Um, and the match yesterday was probably on my mind as well, where there was progression deep in Thieves now when it was a pendant. I was like, yeah, let's just go. I don't want to get burned here. Yeah, Thieves Town can definitely be really rude uh, in pennants or not. Um, a little bit controversial, so, you know, there, there is an ebb and flow to the rando, of course. You know, you, you can inform your decision and, and understand between, you know, a good or a bad pennant Thieves Town, even if they are both pennants, you know, in, in, a, in a race. But uh, it is kind of interesting because, again, I, I would agree that you had a bit more of a conservative style, you know, making sure that you complete the dungeon. In this case, it was very prudent to um, you know, how everything fleshed out. And to contrast that, Fi Rhyme, obviously, you know, both, you know, you, you two are both very, you know, familiar with the logic, you both know how to play. So it really was a little bit more of a clash of, I guess, of, uh, you know, philosophy or play style. Fi Rhyme did, in fact, do first four of these and then left. And also went into Soul oh, wow. and left early. So oh, that, was the, that was the big swing. So, and then after that, um, actually, uh, was was you know going to towards ice too, and then of course double back and you know everything like that. But that really was the big swing. Um, uh, for the most part, everything pretty similar. Some minor differences. Uh, Fran went to Meyer early, got the hook shot early, which meant earlier Death Mountain. Um, again, which factored into you know having more information for these town. And this case, um, maybe actually uh, making it a more difficult decision to do or to justify. You know. And then you go into swamp and you get <laughs> ether and lamp, and of course you know so much opens up. So it, it really was um, a contrast of you know those those things. Yeah, I honestly I feel like going to Death Island earlier would have been a better play. I actually made a pretty big mistake and I've got really lucky from it at the beginning. Like I just genuinely forgot that I found the uh, the flute early on, <laughs> and I I just forgot to activate it in town because I just forgot I had it. Um, and I didn't realize until like I was already in the dark world and I was like, well, like, I'm just gonna have to do something here, which is also a reason I went into Thieves Town because I was like, I have to like make this route worthwhile now. Um, so I'm gonna have to come back to Kakariko on a separate trip. And I got bailed out so hard. You got bailed out so hard, dude. <laughs> I was like, this is just worked out so well. Like, I was like, thank you, game. Thank you so much. Um, and I made another really big oversight as well, which I didn't realize until a lot later in the run, in that I just forgot to go back to Hera Basement, um, which I do quite often. Like, if there's an item there, and I'm just killing Moldorm, like when he's dying, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go back and do the Harum, and then thinking about what I'm doing after that. And I always just leave. Muscle memory always just takes me somewhere else. So that was really fortunate. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy the rewatch. Um, we kind of we kind of mentioned the flute, uh, you know, make sure you activate your flute. But uh, um, it wasn't the worst thing um, if you were like depending on how you wanted to route things. You know, with the Titans uh, getting into the Dark World quicker, and then you know, like you might have skipped these ten entirely, go to Cave and do all that, and then reroute everything. You know, kind of back in. You know, obviously it was kind of strange. You know, oh, you didn't you didn't activate the flute on the first try, but. Uh, you know, so it, like, there's definitely ways to consolidate it, but it was it was really really funny and uh, kind of, kind of the numpty. I, I called it uh, for fun. You know, the the, the numpty vision, uh, getting the the, the weird accurate. to activate. But I mean, it wouldn't have been a crippling error. Like it was just a small time loss, and I feel like I made quite a few like routing mistakes. Nothing crucial, just quite a lot of things where my brain wasn't catching up with what I should be doing until like 20 seconds later. And I was like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. Um, and that's mainly just because I haven't been playing the latest bars randomizer at all really for the last couple months. Outside of my tournament matches, I haven't played in like a solid six, seven weeks or something. Um, so I need to get some practice in like really badly. I just need to get through some runs and then get myself back in the groove of my routing. Yeah, definitely. Like with practice, like obviously when you get to a certain point, 
in 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 play and uh, and just rando. You know how to read stuff. You know it's kind of like riding a bike, but you can still lose a lot of that edge. Like I remember, I came back at one point and I forgot how to get into Dark World with with Mets in Kakariko. This is a long time ago, but I was late. <laughs> I, I just was not connecting the dots at all. And uh, I think that's probably a, a big boon to making sure you're warmed up into the rando. Um, and you know, to be fair, even if you are, that stuff I, I think uh, can still happen. So you know, violence may vary. May vary. Pardon me, but uh, yeah, no, it's still it's still very well played. I mean, obviously, as players recognize their own faults, and uh, we want to self improve. You know, irregardless of whether something worked out. You know, getting bailed out. So you know. Uh, for all the viewers out there, um, you know, definitely take notes. Uh, Self-critique yourself. You know, don't just say, "Oh, well, it worked out, and it worked out okay." You know, if you want to improve and you want to have, a, you know, a strong uh, composure and attitude for improving, you know, acknowledging your errors and not being shy about them is really huge. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, like for this, I had some pretty good fortune, um, and I can easily recognize that it could have gone such a different way with just one item being somewhere else. But that's Randy. But in this case, your uh, thoroughness definitely paid off. Um, I am curious about one thing because this is this is something I have a tough time wrapping my head around. So I'm, I'm really interested to hear about checking the pedestal. You know, and considering you know I, your your ice palace play or your pod slash, uh, I guess Eastern play right. and all that stuff because. I mean, you could have just finished ice and then gone and pulled the pedestal directly, or checked it there, or whatever you want to do uh, to meme at that location. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, you know, what drove that. So, I feel like like there's some pivotal times when it's a very good play to go and check what's there because it can that be a huge time save if it informs you of where you do need to go. Um, like, I had so many different options, none of them were great, and all of them could just lead to dead ends. And if it wasn't pedestal, then, like, I knew exactly what I'd have to do. I could just go mode ice and save such a big amount of time. So it's a really small time investment for a potential mammoth time save. Um, didn't pay off in this case. But... Right. I was curious if you made that play in particular, because I think you still had, you know, like, Catfish and, and Zora on the table. I had, yeah, and, like, that's some overworld locations like graveyard ledge and bombos tablet and so everything know, yeah like everything i had was really spread out and like there wasn't going to be much synergy between anything and really none of the plays were going to lead me to kind of crystal progression or like it, it was just been you know picking picking straws and just rolling the dice and saying should i go here 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 like without any logic or informed kind of logic behind anything so i was like well at least this is in my control i can potentially gain information from doing this and you had already cleared you know two pendant dungeons at that point does you feel like that definitely made that decision easier to go check it well at that point i didn't realize that um thieves town wasn't a bust like in my head i had done quite a bit of time right. investment on one pendant and then gone into another and found that huge payout and I was like, this, like, I just didn't think Ice Palace would have something as well. Um, like, if it wasn't a green pendant, I was diving pod, like, without a doubt, and then diving Eastern. And then after that, I was probably just going to start clearing random overworld locations like Catfish and uh, Hammer Pegs, stuff like that. Cool. But yeah, I mean, o overall it was okay. Um, I just need to get my brain in gear. Like one really good example is I would usually be thinking way more ahead about what items I'm going to be using in the next like couple of rooms in Palace of Darkness, which by the way was the worst go mode part oh, I <laughs> of all existence. You both did the same thing though. That's the funny part is both you and Farim skipped the vanilla big key chest. Was it? Was vanilla. Yeah, was it was it a key counting thing, or uh, I'm just curious regarding that. I mean, I guess because of the way it laid out, it wasn't as it was a little bit yuckier. But yeah, so there was a key in the first chest, and then Bombos in the like the bridge chest. So you had to then drop down to get another key, and then go right side. So I either could have mirrored after that and checked the one chest, like another big key, or I could have just typed the back, and I. Like, Statistically, going to the back was a much better decision, I feel like. And it just didn't pay off. 
in my favor. Oh. Like, I knew it, that it didn't have to be a small key there, but it still could have been a small key or a map or a compass. But I was just like, yeah, typical. Like, <laughs> I mean, I got lucky enough <laughs> elsewhere, so like, I can't be too mad. And my GT play was also almost a full player. Oh. But. Uh, it's kind of wondering because I think in terms of the key logic, if you find two item, two non-small keys um, before the back of pod, I do believe that the other chests have to be a key. So between Bombos, I don't remember what was in the both side, but I have to assume that maybe the rest were small keys then, and that yes. meant that yes. the middle. Okay, so the middle was the question mark, and you just kind of mm -hmm. opted to to pursue gamble that it wasn't going to be there. Um, yeah. So I oh, guess okay. that, that was a gamble, I guess, but I felt like the, the, the odds were in my favor for it. But well, yeah, gam not. gamble's a bit of a misnomer. You, you can use it uh, in both, you know, in terms of gambling a location and then actually, like, not gambling the location being a little gamble. But I guess in this case, when I say gamble, I just mean you made an educated uh, decision to not check that one chest and to hope that between all the chests in the pod, that would in fact not be in there. Yes, exactly. And I did that a couple of times in Skullwoods as well, um, by going to the back first, and Swamp Palace by going to the boss first, etc. Um, you just hope that you find the like the keys or the big key or the items that you're looking for that make routing the rest of the dungeon quicker. Yeah, absolutely. All part of that risk reward. Um, just to kind of interject briefly, uh, here I'm now finishing Ganon, stepping across the finish line, and has finished in second place with an SR TV official time of 1 hour, 50 minutes, and 24 seconds. So obviously a sizable chunk between the two, but considering everything that went on, um, it's no surprise. Um, just kind of how the rando played out. So, not definitely GG's to both our races here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this isn't a like a good result for what the norm is. Like, I have no doubts that our second match is going to be a nail biter and really close. Um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we could see Farim's you know skill in gameplay just fine <laughs> by watching um, how how well he did. But two gambles not paying off is is kind of a game ending. <laughs> situation yeah it's really unfortunate it just sounds like it compounded like yeah and will compound it on each other and you can't really come back from something like that not yeah. in like top 16 anyway it's just yeah it's unfortunate yeah it's definitely a nice thing though um again my opinion uh format is huge for competitive rando and so again huge benefit here still have another match and you know again the seed the seed itself you know gameplay uh, game style philosophy. Um, you know, a bit unfortunate if you frame here. It's it's not because of uh, you know any uneducated decision or or whichever. It was just simply a judgment call that in this case didn't work out. But one more match, you know, s still lots of potential makes it really exciting. Um, yeah, I'll know. That's good stuff. You got any uh, interesting? thoughts about game two because we got game two coming up tomorrow 5 30 p.m eastern time same time as as today but we got we got a game two yeah i'm hoping for kind of an open like an open world like we had today we had a lot of choices and we were able to make a lot of decisions like even from the start with boots it just got things going quicker um being able to set up uh the water walk and kind of scouting that area and then instant mitts uh, these are my favorite seeds, um, so I hope we get something like that again. And yeah, I'm just going to try and play as well as I can. Um, and I've got to assume that Fiorain will be playing riskier um, tomorrow. Um, so I'll try and bear that in mind and see if that will kind of decide if I should play more conservative again. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Fast and loose. I like it. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm just gonna stay silent. I wanted yeah, I was, to hear I was one. Of it too, and I'm like, I'm gonna like. I'm setting go. people up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long no one, day. No I, one's biting. I need, I need, I need some tea. Got to get those juices flowing. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the rewatch though. Thank you guys for commentating. Um, I'm sure it was 
stellar out of this world commentary as to be expected from you two. Aw, thank you. Well, thank you. Wouldn't be able to do it without you awesome runners giving us high quality play. (laughs) Go on, shucks. Yeah, (laughs) no, but uh, no, it's definitely a lot of fun um, for myself, obviously. you know, both both you and my friends. Um, you know, we've talked about logic and stuff before. Um, some kind of similar approaches. So, you know, it's fun. Again, I got I personally got hype over the swamp play. Um, you, you'll you'll see in the rewatch, of course. Um, and then of course Alucard. I'm like, man, like, like I missed doing some commentaries here. I've been busy, and of course, you know, engine tournament and whatnot. But I'm like, Alu, it's my co-com. It's pretty hype. Um, oh, it's fun commentating. You know, with different people. And then of course, you know, especially people that you're more familiar with. So for me, um, it just made it all the better. I was like, this is this is too perfect, and uh, so yeah, th- you know, definitely thank you know all you guys for you know the opportunity and everything, and uh, it was it was a ton of fun. I, I think it went super good. Yeah, this was a blast. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me, Giselle, and I want to also thank everybody for coming out and watching too, because we wouldn't be able to get the hype for this this game and this randomizer without you coming here and and joining us for the show. So, thank you all. And of course to our tracker Carissa who was who was helping out behind the scenes. So, major props there. Wouldn't be able to know what even is going on in these seeds without them. <laughs> uh but I believe we have another tournament match starting like right now on speed gaming four it's going to be alg andy versus zero rush so that's going to be super exciting make sure you guys head on over there and check that out and then we do have uh unfit versus glowing i believe on alttp randomizer later tonight at 9 p.m eastern time and hippo versus amazing ampharos on speed gaming 3 at 10 p.m eastern time so plenty of hype top 16 matches coming your way uh today so stay tuned yeah absolutely again just to reiterate next match andy zero speed gaming for uh coming up you know pretty much uh right now i think so uh you know definitely definitely go so sh- show some love there but full full night ahead as uh Alucard already eloquently mentioned but uh no i no, i think i think that's it i think it's wrapping up here hey yeah GG's again to Christos and Farai. I'm looking forward to a game two tomorrow. Take care, everyone. Keep watching those randos. (laughs) GG's. Take care. Bye.